Okay, in this tutorial, we're going to take another look at some other features concerning rigid body dynamics in the new version 2.66. Okay, so now I have all, just four different cubes in the scene and two different ground planes, actually. Notice here, there's plane, I click it again, it's plane dot zero, zero, 001. All right, so what, what we're doing in here is this is uh, a setup that's similar to using layers. When you're using the physics button and cloth effects and soft bodies, remember how they can be on individual layers to do their own things well in this case this is set up as an active object in rigid bodies here uh, they're all active in these cases and these two planes are set up as passive objects alright so let me just run the simulation real quick you'll see they come down and run into each other like you would expect okay however if I was to move these over here like this move this to this side and move this one on top of this and run it again. Notice this orange cube doesn't do anything, even though it's a rigid body, and yet, I mean, even though it bounces off the plane, well, what it's doing is it's bouncing off its own plane and it's bouncing off its own plane, but these guys are essentially on separate layers, but they're not layers. Let's go over here. What they are is, in this case, collision groups. It, the second you look at it, it'll become obvious, unless you're not familiar with it. And then, but what's nice is that you can combine that with other effects. So, basically, if you notice this one, it's on layer two, and this one's on layer two, or collision group two, I should say. And that one's on one. That one's on one. And this first ground plane is on this second one and the other one is on the first one like that alright so that way only certain objects collide with certain objects if you want to restrict it that way very powerful cool little feature I must say for making it work so there's yeah it collides with that but it won't collide with that one there okay so that's really straightforward and then of course then you want to try and mix in you know something maybe we'll put some wind in here let's let's just add a wind object force field some wind let's see which way is it pointing where is it oh it's pointing down let's rotate it on the uh, global axis so we'll rotate it on X like this here and come over here to the wind and give it a little bit of strength let's just see what happens when we run it uh, that's not enough strength to really tell us we really crank it up all right so they're all working even though they're on their own different collision groups okay well let's see they're still not going to collide with each other if I move that over like that it's still not going to collide but yet the wind affects it differently so if you want to have a separate wind affecting the different groups you're also going to have to say shift D X I'll make a separate wind object here I'll press U to make it its own entity like that and more importantly I'll press M and move it over into layer 2 okay and then these guys as well I'm going to move over into layer 2 and that one layer 2 like this and the reason I'm doing that is then I'll bring layer 2 up like this but then on this object I'm going to rotate that on Z and I said RZ like that. Now when I run it, let me go full screen so you can see it a little bit better. There you can see those are blowing that way, those are blowing that way. All right. Like that. So there's, uh, it's kind of a combination of both. You can use layers and collision groups to make things work together. Very cool, very powerful. And that's it for this lesson. I'll see you next time.